Well, we're breaking in a breaking in a brand new pit reporter here today. He looks an <laughs> awful lot like Larry Mack. Yeah, I've got my rookie stripe on, Steve. Now, I'm standing here with Robbie Gordon. Robbie, what a chain of events for Robbie Gordon Motorsports in seven days. You send your car to Pocono. It's outside the top 35. You're in Mexico. Ted Musgrave's going to qualify. It doesn't make the show, but you come to Michigan in the top 35 in points. What a chain of events. It, it, it was. Uh, Ted did actually a good job. He just missed it down in turn three and got a little sideways, but I think he was like 23rd or 22nd going into three and just got sideways, and that cost us. But... You know, the, the deal with front row, it, uh, it obviously changed the game. But, you know, it happened to us, and that's kind of how we got outside the top 35 when we got busted for the wood and the door at Darlington. You know, Robbie, every week, you know, you, you show up sometimes with something on the side of the car. Some weeks it's blank quarter panels. It's good to see that you're continuing to work to get more companies on your car. Yeah, what's really cool with this speedfactory.tv is I got a bunch of investors that jumped in and uh, we're building this TV channel, which is going to give a real interesting behind the scenes look at what goes on in NASCAR races, our off-road races, as well as monster trucks and some of the other stuff that we do. All right, well, good luck in this qualifying run. And uh, Steve, the good thing is he don't have to worry about starting the race, just where he starts. Got your clipboard, I see, Larry Mack. <laughs> <laughs> Show me uh, notes, Larry. Show that's me notes. Right. Let's see your notes, Larry Mack, before we go to break. Come on, Larry. Atta I meant boy. to leave him up there for Daryl. Hey, hey, hey. You know I'll what I like? You, I'll give you $100 for your notes. You know what I like right now, Daryl, the guys? He's got his sleeves rolled he up. Does, he's back he down there on pit road. And, Larry, you look very comfortable down there, buddy. I want you to know. All right. We'll, <laughs> we'll take a break. Let reporter McReynolds have at it. Stay with us here on Speed for the Michigan International Speedway. Mr. McReynolds may have a rookie stripe down there, but his partner down there, Marty Snyder, does not. I do not. But, you know, I think Larry Mack is way overdressed for pit road. I'm with Hart Kevin Harvick. Can you see Larry Mack over there? He's, like, wearing a nice shirt. He's way too – there he is. Way too dressed up for pit road, isn't he, Kevin? Way too dressed up. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely dressed well. He looks good, though. <laughs> you might need some sunscreen on your hands right here, though. Sunscreen? Sun well, I think the whole I have head. the same problem. Yeah, yeah. You should give him some sunscreen advice, Harv. That would or probably be a good thing. Or a hat. Wear a hat. That's the best thing you can do, Larry Mack. Like Dr. Dick Bergen. That's right. Then, then he would be in good shape. So, uh, yeah, how's T-shirt sales going? Everything's good. Everything's good. <laughs> Let's go to the finely quaffed and sunscreen needing Larry McReynolds. I think Kevin Harvick needs to pay close attention to who I'm about to interview before he starts cutting on old Larry Mack, but that's a whole other story. Now, Joey, this is your third trip here to Michigan. You were 12th quickest in practice, and like a lot of tracks, if you go back to last year, you improved so much from the first race to the second race. What do you think about this qualifying run coming? I think they're going to be pretty good. Uh, in practice, the car was really tight in race trim, and uh, it felt slow, but there's, there's speed there compared to other cars. So I feel like if we get the car handling, we're going to be real good. So... Uh, and qualifying trim, I felt like we were okay with the Home Depot Toyota. I just, uh, I think it was like three tenths from where we were to the, to the pole. So uh, it tracks me way different now. And uh, so it's basically just hammer down and uh, hopefully she sticks. All right, you're going to be a busy man. You're going to qualify this car and then you're going to catapult down to Kentucky, a place where you're trying to go three for three for qualifying on the pole and three for three on winning the race. Yeah, uh, hopefully, um, you know, it's a little delayed here for qualifying, obviously. So. Uh, when I get out of here, I'm going to run to the airport, and uh, hopefully it's not raining there. I know there's some weather coming over there, too. So uh, depending on what the weather is, we're going to fly down there and uh, try to get some practice in, and uh, hopefully we can get that car fast. That's you know, a, a fun place for me. I have a lot of fun running a nationwide car there. So uh, it would be cool to get the three for three there. Steve, I don't know if I'd bet against this man, Kentucky. If you think about it, he won there in his third nationwide series start. He just had turned 18 years old. It just turned 20. But Burns, I don't understand. You know, me and Hammond, we would either drive down there or fly down there. Larry said he's going to catapult down there. <laughs> What's that going to look like? I don't know. And let's go down to Larry. Steve, I'm standing here with Kurt Busch. Kurt, you were third quickest in practice. And, of course, always when you have a little bit of delay like we had and the racetrack gets rained on and the jet dryers, the question, how much grip will this racetrack have? We're certainly seeing these guys pick up quite a bit from practice. Yeah, with the rubber being washed off, I think it gains a little bit more grip and the track temperatures cooled down. And then I'm sure um, the guys tuning up the engine with the jetting have checked to see that the air is a better quality air right now after a thunderstorm came through. So guys are going to be going fast. When you have a two-mile racetrack, it's about some horsepower. That's for sure. All right, well, good luck qualifying, buddy. Thank you. All right, Steve, a lot of these guys are anxious to get these two qualifying laps in because the forecast for tomorrow is a little iffy as well. Yeah, let's go to Larry Mack. And in here with Kyle Busch. Kyle, you made one run with your 18 M&M's Toyota earlier in the day, the first of practice, and then you about knew shortly into that run that something didn't exactly feel right. 
Yeah, we had a little bit of an engine problem, you know, it started vibrating and shaking, especially when I would start it up and shut it off, you know, you'd kind of feel it settle. Um, unfortunately for the guys, they had to go through a lot of work today and change the engine to get it ready to go with this m and pretzel car, but the car was a little bit tight balance-wise, so maybe with the way that the suns came out and made this track a little slick, we'd be all right. Now, you sat on the pole last week at Pocono, and you got that number one pit selection, and I'm telling you, number one pit selection at any racetrack we go to, you can't beat it. Even though you'll have to go to the rear of the field, there's still, still a lot in this qualifying run. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, this about the only thing we're qualifying for is that pit selection, so hopefully we can get a good, solid uh, qualifying effort here where we can at least get a, a top ten pick. You know, I don't know that uh, I don't know that we need anything better than that, but... You know, I think that having a good car here Sunday will pay more than uh, than where you qualify today. All right, good luck, buddy. Marty Snyder, I would not bet against this man not qualifying in the top ten. Larry? All right, I'm chasing the 2010 Prelude to the Dream feature winner, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, how about the dirt race the other night, man? You put it on him. You didn't lead the last lap. You led every lap. Yeah, a good qualifying effort really helped me, and I think that, that hurt me in years past. I would show up and... Uh, maybe I had some bad habits from a test session or uh, just not enough experience and not, not run well in qualifying. And I put in a good lap and, and started, you know, on the pole because of the inversion, the way it worked out. And then ran 30 laps, which really turned into about 75 with all the cautions that we had and couldn't get the race started as hard as I could and held those guys off. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And I uh, came here and we've had a fast race car here too. I was going to say, speaking of qualifying, when you unloaded, you were actually in race trim, and you still went to the top of the practice sheet. Yeah, I, we've seen that happen with other guys, and I've always wondered, well, how, how'd they do that? And we did it today. I mean, there's so much grip that first, you know, five minutes being on race on the racetrack that uh, we laid down a good one. And right now, things are kind of going the other way for us with the sun coming out. But I think we've got a good car. And we've still got a shot at it. All right, well, guys, just remember, this 48 car is still looking for their first pole here in 2010. Thank you, Marty. Hey, uh, Larry Mack, AJ's coming to the start finish line. You know what they say about AJ Allmendinger? He is a humdinger. Attaboy. <laughs> and Steve, I'm here with Casey Mears. Uh, all right, Casey, you're in the car that has sat on the last three poles here, won the race the last time we were here. And you know what? Casey Mears runs pretty good here at Michigan. This has been a good track for me. I've, I've always enjoyed it. Um, but they definitely, you know, Brian just runs so well around this place. And, and obviously what they've worked on the last few years has worked well here. Um, we, we've worked real hard at trying to find out what it is that I need as com compared to what Brian is used to having. And uh, we've made some changes this week. I feel like we're going in the right direction for sure. Um, you know, we weren't quite where we wanted to be in qualifying, a little bit too free. But we made some adjustments, and we'll, we'll see how it goes here today. Second week with that familiar voice in your Jimmy Elledge, that you had a lot of success over there at Ganassi Racing for two or three years. You know, it's nice, uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan's a great guy and he's been around a long time, has a lot of experience, but kind of shortcutting that, uh, you know, get to know each other stage. You know, Jimmy and I have, have worked together for a long time and it feels like we're right back to where we were. So um, it's right at just the heart of the matter, which is working on the car and not trying to figure each other out, which has been good. And everybody at Rebel Race has been working real hard at trying to, to make that happen as soon as possible. So it's been fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what we have today. The track is getting hotter, which is, uh, it's not a good sign, but uh, we're looking forward to going out and see what we have. And one thing I definitely will vouch for, it's getting hotter. I agree with Marty Snyder. I believe I'm a little overdressed for pit road. Larry, you're going to need fresh makeup for trackside, which Casey <laughs> Mears will join us for. And a fresh shirt. And fresh hairspray. Y'all are going to kill poor Larry down there. <laughs> <laughs> he volunteered for that, right? I well, think so. I thought you were supposed to be down there. Well, I, tell, I took out my new volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Larry. All right, I don't know about a goat, but if Daryl don't quit picking on me, I'll talk about a jackass or something. I don't know. I'm here with Sam Hornish, and Sam, I know you're getting ready to qualify here at Michigan, but what a run at Pocono last week to get up there and lead laps late in that race. Yeah, it was definitely good. Uh, the car was good all day long. We uh, didn't qualify as well as we'd like to, so it took us a while to get up there. Um, you know, ran you know between 10th and you know 15th most of the day, but just you know we're never going to get up there. So we uh, knew we had a little bit better fuel mileage than some other guys, and uh, we pitted early. Uh, everything played out real well. Got the lead and uh, we just were hoping for no yellows you know and then we got three of them along the way and uh, you know hurt us a little bit but it was a great morale booster for all the guys on the mobile one dodge and we'll just uh, you know go into this weekend see what we can do here all right good luck qualifying buddy Larry Mack all right Elliot I want to make sure I do this right <laughs> <laughs> can I do it right you actually you did very well I'm proud of you all right well you're working hard down here your sleeves are rolled up sweat just beating <laughs> All right, 
aside from what I'm doing, how about what Elliot Sadler's doing for, I think this may be one of the first times other than the All-Star race that you've got to run a new FR9 engine. We, we are, and it's, it's definitely making a difference. Uh, I really like the response of it. It runs good off the bottom of the corner. Uh, Doug Yates and those guys have been working very, very hard to get them in, in all the Ford vehicles this weekend because it's such a big race here in, in Michigan. Uh, we want to run good this weekend. We're running for a million dollars this weekend. So uh, if we win the race, uh, Stanley's going to donate a million dollars to Canadian Tire Jumpstart. It's a great program in Canada that helps kids 4 to 18 years old get started in different sports and things like that. So it's all for the kids. I'm a big kid at heart, so a lot of pressure on us this weekend. You mind if I just keep this Coke? I'm a little thirsty. You, you look like you're working hard. You I am it. working hard. See you guys. I'm proud of you. Chug points. Ah. <laughs> Larry, you might want to borrow his hat. I don't want you to get sunburned. I was going to say, Larry needs to put the Coke down and get him a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Truex Jr., seventh overall of 14 drivers. Kurt Busch, the guy to beat. I hate bringing Larry back up, but you remember the last time he got out in the sun and went to a tennis match? And yes. He came, he came to the Hall of Fame deal. Larry, be careful down there, buddy. He needs one of them bucket hats. You know, one of them yep. you get way down in. Got yep. a big long bill on the front of it. Larry looked like a tomato after that tennis match. Well, no, I think uh, I think Larry is actually a cucumber. I, I think I would classify it as now a pack of jackasses up there. <laughs> <laughs> now I was trying to be serious. I didn't want you to get sunburned. The rest of them I can't speak about. <laughs> Larry, I, Larry, I'm sorry, but I think I may have had some influence on these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Leading you there, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. Well, you set them up, and sometimes somebody else knocks them down. I think Daryl's going fishing, and the problem is you and I are biting. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Larry Mack. What a mess. Yeah, go, Larry. Go, <laughs> go, Larry. Go, Larry. Uh, I didn't think my butt was flipped the right way. But <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been thinking that for 10 years. <laughs> Anyhow, the I am here. Button ain't I, flipped on. Good at it. I am here with the winning car owner from the Prelude to the Dream, the man that ran second, not first, but second in the Prelude. Pretty good night, though, for Clint Boyer Racing. Yeah, I see Jimmy. Uh, he's out there right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, won the race, and we run second. Dirt boys at the dirt shop are proud. Uh, one, two finish for them. I was, I was happy for them. All right, after finishing ninth at Pocono last week, you are now back in the top 12, but we still got a long way to that chase, Clint. Oh, absolutely. But, um, you know, getting back in the top 12 is the first item up the bid. And, you know, we're still after that elusive win. We haven't won for Cheerios and Hamburger Helper, and we got to get that done. We got a brand new racer here this weekend. Been working hard and getting closer. Had a good run last week at Pocono, and I'm excited. You mind if I keep that Coke? I'm a little thirsty. Yeah. The yeah. interview, you're supposed to give you another. Okay. Hey, you know what, Boyer? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. A lot better. A lot better. You know what Boyer, Boyer said? He said, I know Johnson was definitely cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad when your car owner says something like that. <laughs> throw, him, throw him on the bus. Yeah. And, and Larry Mack, are you, are you trying to get a deal or something down there today? He's getting chuck points. I'm telling you. I'm always looking for a deal, Hammond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am a deal. <laughs> Just keep that switch flipped, will you? <laughs> yeah, in the right position, that is. <laughs> Sam Hornish and Paul Menard. I'm Jimmy here. Larry Mack, is your button in the right position? No, it's not. Now we hear you talking, and you're not supposed to be talking. <laughs> I'm everywhere down here. Guys, I'm with Ryan Newman. Ryan, you were 20th quickest in practice. Looks like you guys maybe made a little bit of a mock qualifying run there near the end. We did. It, uh, it started raining on uh, my qualifying lap. I went my qualifying lap through one and two there, and I backed off a little bit. But I don't really know exactly what we had. We made some changes to the race car, just trying to get a little bit more speed out of it. Uh, but I think the track's going to be back to where it was. It's, I was kind of happy we had a late draw, but now I'm not so happy. Were you making fun of my big forehead while ago? <laughs> no, no, you're talking about Lindsay being blonde. I said, well, I really can't tell what you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real, real quick. Get it again, what happened? Look, work with me. You don't have to work with me, just don't work against me. Big weekend for Army. It is. It's uh, their birthday this weekend. Was it 235? 225, I think. Sure. You want me to do this interview? I don't know. I know it's the birthday of the Army, so we're proud to represent the U.S. Army and all the soldiers out there. And we'll, we'll, we'll do our best today for giving them one heck of a lap. All right. Good luck this weekend, buddy. Thank you. Hey, Larry. Hey. What you don't know is DW was just using the Telestrator. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are just wrong. Yeah. We, we just wanted to show how hard you work. Yeah.
also happy to hear that Larry is out of control at the other end of pit road. He's so yeah. buttoned up and organized. I'm glad that he's finally unorganized. We need sunscreen. We need a hat and uh, and a lot of things down there. I think. You think we could tune down his accent just a little bit? He makes up some <laughs> words and says some really weird things from time to time. <laughs> is there a button for that? I don't think there's a button no. for that on this. No, I don't think there is either. But uh, we like picking on him. Everybody loves him in the garage area because he's a lot of fun and great guy. And uh, well, we watch David Reagan. We'll go back to Larry McReynolds. Yeah, I'm here with Regan Smith. Regan, you guys stayed at the top of the practice charts almost that entire practice was all said and done you were up there in the seventh position pretty good here today yeah it was you know it's a lot different conditions than what we got to deal with right now so we'll see what we got for a lap here but i was i was real happy with the car even in race trim earlier today it was really good and uh all the guys in the furniture row chevy have been doing a really good job and this is a brand new race car so it's uh you know it's a testament to how hard the guys are working back home in the shop and uh and that's in colorado not not north carolina like most of them but uh Excited. We'll see what we got here in a little bit. Speaking of working in your young racing career, have you ever seen anybody work this hard on pit road as I've been doing today? <laughs> I, you've been up and down, Larry. You've been pretty busy. We've been uh, we've been checking you out on TV there, and and I, uh, it's been impressive. And, and Steve and Jeff, just for the record, the wind you feel is not a car coming by. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, uh, Larry, they're bringing you another battery for your pack. Because <laughs> you just about run that one down. David, well, let's see whose coat that Larry Mack has stolen now. Well, actually, I'm standing with a man that made his first career start in Sprint Cup Series here back in August 2004, 19th in practice. Uh, where do we think we're at for this 99 car? You know, I'm not sure. I've been watching the cars here, and uh, I, I think we have the potential to be pretty fast. You know, we made really, really one good run at, uh, at qualifying, and Bob's made some changes, and got all the Ford guys sitting over here. We had a really good day at Ford yesterday, and learn a lot about their new products and and they remind us how important it is to run well here so hopefully we can get this Affleck fusion up front and it'd be, it'd be good to start out here in qualifying now the other night at Eldora the minute they decided to do away with the cone Carl Edwards took full advantage of that had to get what I could and I you know charity event I know they're not gonna throw you out uh, so <laughs> I was going for it I, I saw that cone on the big screen like they were fumbling with it I thought I bet that thing's not there so uh, Kind of took advantage of Schrader a little bit, but um, he'd have done the same to me. We, we had a good time, and it was a cool event, and finished third. And, uh, man, to see how pumped Jimmy was afterwards, that's how much that race means to everybody. It's, it's so cool to win. All right, well, good luck qualifying, and good luck here on Sunday. Right, thank and you. Speaking of attitudes, here's Larry McReynolds. <laughs> I'm here with Landon Castle, who is attempting to make his very first Sprint Cup Series start. And, and Landon, no matter how many races you run, there, there's you, you can never replace the first one if you can step this thing up and get it in on qualifying. Yeah, that's the goal today. Um, I just just really excited to be here. Really thankful of uh, uh, James Finch and Phoenix Racing for giving me the opportunity. Uh, we got a great Hendrick engine under the hood, and uh, you know, in practice, I was I was happy with how we unloaded and, and we were pretty fast. Uh, we just didn't get faster as practice went on. So uh, we made some adjustments, and uh, we know what we got to do. You know, we were a little loose off, and I wasn't able to commit to the gas. So uh, we know what we got to do. I just got to go man up and do it. So this is a good place to qualify. Now, we know you're still pretty much under the Hendrick Motorsports banner. What, what seems to be in the future for Landon Castle? Maybe more attempts in this 09 car? Hopefully, if I do well enough, uh, they'll ask me to do it again. So um, I've do, been doing a lot of testing for Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, you know, I really appreciate them trusting me with their race cars and that's really what has gotten me this this ride so um you know the testing is, has been big for me and then obviously some nationwide races that i've been doing this year and uh just trying to stay in the seat as much as possible and, and just extremely blessed to be uh, at a sprint cup series race well guys we certainly hope this young man can step it up and get it in the show but this would have been one of the teams that would have been in had the range moved in based on that win by brad keselowski at talladega last year the larry mack Steve, nobody probably knows how miserable Friday can be as a go or go homer than Michael Walter. Michael, you're trying to get in your fourth show of 2010. Why at Michigan? Well, we're going to race next week in uh, Sonoma. I've got a sponsor, Toyota Sponsor Fire Your Car, is on our, on our Toyota Camry next week for Prism. And so I just wanted to remind myself of how miserable these days are when you've got to go make the show on time. I mean, I lived it two or three years ago, and I just needed a little bit of a refresher, I guess, to, to go out there and, and try to put this car in the show this week, get to know the guys a little bit, and be ready for next week. But I want to explain something to you. 
I do the truck races on speed up there in the booth. What a cushy job. Anybody can sit up there and talk. It's the men and women on pit road that sweat, that dig to get the stories that make a broadcast. If it weren't for you guys making the sacrifices you make and doing the things you do, those guys up in the booth wouldn't even have a job. So thank you, Larry. I appreciate what you're doing. I may be the first pit reporter in the history of NASCAR to pour Coca-Cola on myself. It looks good to you, but don't waste to drop that Coca-Cola. It's good. <laughs> right to the last drop. I'm a part-time driver, so I don't have one of them people to hand me my Coke when I need it. So I'm going to do a little bit of this. You know what they say in Alabama, don't you? That's two nice ones right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> I'm be, I'm be like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Who are those guys? Who are those guys? <laughs> well, Larry Mack, Regan Smith, just 22nd overall. All right, I'm here with Dave Blaney. And, Dave, you and I were just talking. Had the reins moved in here and stayed, the 66 car would not have been in. At least you get a shot at getting in this thing. And Dave Blaney normally figures out how to make that happen. Yeah, we're still out at the moment until we uh, get in. So, uh, yeah, car's been okay today. We didn't get to make our last little sticker run there right before the reins came. But... Uh, tracks kind of different things are kind of different, but who knows? Um, they got that thing where it'll, where it'll cut a lap. So we'll see what we got. You know, Dave, we sit up there in that booth week after week and watch how you guys qualify with nothing on the quarter panels. If people would only realize if y'all could get something to race, you might could race these boys. We do. We do actually have nice equipment. Um, they're year old Waltrip cars, but but they're really nice. Um, the pro motors in them run good. We just don't have much of anything, but um, just a couple of guys do a really nice job. Bill Henderson and crew chief does a nice job on them. And they, like you say, they are competitive. They make nice laps. And um, yeah, who knows? Maybe here we'll get some uh, get some breaks and race a little bit. Well, guys, I've watched these Gorgo homers for a long time from the booth. But I'm going to tell you, being down here on pit road, watching these drivers in the teams, I mean, it is tense. 69, Larry Mack. All right, I'm with Max Pappas. And I don't think anybody has any more fun when they actually are told on the radio that you are in than Max Pappas. Max, you go back last week to Pocono. You stepped it up qualifying, qualified 20th. How about here today? You know, as I was telling you, I feel confident in the Toyota. You know, the guys have been working really hard. We have a very, very, very good group of people, very dedicated people working at it. And uh, it's just a matter of having uh, enough time to get to put everything together and learn about it. You know, it's a difficult, it's the most difficult series I've ever run. And I feel confident about it. I am excited about it. I'm going to try to get it out, uh, you know, back on the gas as hard as I can. And, uh, you know, keep finger crossed. Well, I tell you what, guys, when he gets in, there's nobody that has more fun than Max Pappas. Thanks, Larry. David Stremme up next. I don't know about that. I've been having a pretty good time with this. There you go. I road myself. <laughs> Just think of that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's been turning. It worked out pretty well. I got a pair of sunglasses like that that uh, Juan had on. Do too. you look as good in them as he does? I'm going to loan them to Larry. I oh, think are he, you going to loan them to Larry? I think that's exactly what he, that would set him off down there on pit road. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, his, that's the final piece of his outfit. Get one of those big bucket hats with the big bill and those sunglasses. <laughs> See how many interviews he gets in. He looked like a tourist. <laughs> Larry Mack on pit road. Well, guys, I'm here with Bill Elliott. Six poles, seven wins. The Wood Brothers, 11 wins, 18 <laughs> wins total. That's some pretty solid numbers uh, for this package you guys got here. Yeah, but that was before today. <laughs> you know, this is a whole different world today and the way these cars are and, you know, still trying to catch up, running a limited schedule and everything you do in this sport, it, it's tough. It's a tough deal. And, uh, you know, Ford's been good to the Woods Brothers and, the Woods Brothers have been good to me, and I'm going to go give it my best shot. Are you still having fun when you come each week, Bill? Oh, I'm having a ball. I still enjoy it. Uh, I had good. I had a lot of fun the other night at El Dora, but we'll see what today brings. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Guys, I found a hat, just for the record. Perfect. I'm feeling thank, better. Thank you, Dudley Do-Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. But how about Bill doing Bill the interview never, with a straight face? Yeah, never, never checked even, up. Never looked up, never said a word. <laughs> never checked up. Larry? Well, I'm here with a man that sat on the pole here in June of 2007, J.J. Yaley. And, uh, J.J., uh, you are the caboose of the Go Go Homers. We will know when you run. All of the anticipation will be over. Yeah, it's, it's really eating me up right now, too. Um, you know, the uh, the Promise Village speed plant car has been really good. We were 30th quick in practice. Um, you know, the car looked good. The car drives good. You know, we struggled with a little bit of speed getting off the corner. Uh, but the most part, I just got to go lay everything I got on the first lap because I don't think you're going to get much on the second one. 
But JJ, ever since you started driving this 46 car, you guys have stepped it up and qualified for every single race. And, and that's a tall order. Yeah, knock on wood. Uh, you know, Tony Fur, the guys, they've been working their butts off. I mean, there's only five guys at the shop, and they, uh, they've given me a great race car every time we go on the racetrack. Um, you know, if it unloads good, drives good, it makes it easy to where you just, you know, you're fine tune on the thing the whole day. It's when it unloads and it's a bucket that you're in trouble. So, so far, things have been good. Uh, we'll hopefully keep the streak alive today. Well, good luck on this qualifying. And guys, as you can see, this is Larry Mack's last driver to interview. I'm done. Y'all can pick on somebody no, else. No. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye-bye. Go to the garage. Go to the garage, Larry. Got to do the go pole. I can't you hear you. Got to do the pole. You're breaking up. Yeah, go get the pole winner. I've seen this pose before. Walking off like that. What does that remind you of? We see that picture on trackside every now and then. <laughs> uh, the chef? Yeah, the chef. <laughs> <laughs> it looked exactly like the chef, didn't it? And Marty Schneider is with him. Yeah, Steve, we were going to let Larry Mack do this interview, but I think he's out hat shopping I right now. I think you're Try, right. Trying to find some right. sunscreen or a hat or something. Uh,